what a what a chapter what a final chapter to kind of wrap up Jujutsu Kaisen for probably a month or more because FYI if you have not heard the news Gegi Akutami is going to be going on an indefinite hiatus and we don't really know the full reasons we just know the editorial department of Weekly Shonen Jump was like hey you gotta take a break we we we're potentially forcing you to stop for right now and you come back at a later date so just like at the end of the day as I think we can all agree the mangaka's health Akutami's health is more important than writing a manga as much as we all love Jujutsu Kaisen as much as we love to see the continuation of the story dive in to the next arc I think the mangaka the author of this story deserves a break and comes back with a clear head better health and then the story can ramp up once again and be even greater than it once was. So just like, this is the last chapter for a while. But at the same time, at the very least, the arc with Maki has come to a close. We could at least say that this arc is concluded. And it's concluded in such a way where it's just like, you're reminded of Itachi from Naruto. If you've watched Naruto, you'll know what Itachi did. Itachi literally wiped out his entire clan. Everybody was pretty much deceased. The only one that was left living was Itachi himself and Sasuke, his brother. That was it. And so just when you really look at everything, it's just like, yo. It, it, it's just crazy to see just Maki do the exact same thing. And the way it was just so cold-blooded is insane. But uh, let's uh, talk about that. This chapter is rather short it is a very 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 short chapter like in fact like i'm gonna pull up the chapter real quick i'm just wanna i'm gonna make sure myself uh it yeah there's like only there there's literally 11 pages only 11 pages normally jump chapters like i think they're like 16 18 pages sometimes so just like seeing the lack of pages here it once again goes and hints at the problem that there's something going on behind the scenes with akutami and so, it is a very, very short chapter. And even though it's short, like I said, it gets to the point and it does wrap up Maki's arc perfectly, in my personal opinion. There are some things I wish could have been extended, but it is still a fantastic ending that, honestly, I'm just satisfied. I'm just satisfied to see Maki get her conclusion, the character growth, and potentially hints at what might happen to her in the future. So, let's actually get into this. So, the chapter opens up with Maki confronting her mother. And her mother is basically just like, no and all that, and acting very, like, I guess, not wanting to spill the beans or talk about anything. And Maki's just trying to really confront her and question her, like, you know, what's going on here? Did you know, etc.? Why did you do this? And the mother doesn't seem to really answer her at all and then it's cut to a scream of no and you see blood hit the wall now obviously many people might look at this entire sequence in the chapter and think maki killed her mother but honestly i don't really believe that like when you look at the pages following after that you see the mother kind of hobble over towards Nalia, kind of crawling away and all that, and that's bleeding. And you see the mother of Maki literally holding a knife, like a cutting knife, like a kitchen knife, and just stabs him in the heart and he dies. Obviously, this is ironic because he dies to a woman, but also he dies to the very woman he made fun of a few chapters back, saying like, oh, you know, a woman is useless if you don't stay three steps behind a man or something. That's like what, you know, he said. He said that. So it's just like, when you look at what he said and how sexist he was, just seeing how he died like that, it's fitting. It's very ironic, and it's fitting. And, but here's another thing. To seeing by the way she died, and she even had this brief, like, dreamlike sequence remembering her children of Mai and Maki, and she's like, I'm glad I had you, I'm glad you are my children, it kind of hints at the fact that she was not someone that was actually awful to her kids. She was someone that tried to protect Mai and Maki in her own way. She wasn't the best mother, obviously, but she tried to do it in her own way, which it might be kind of let us know that Maki wasn't the one that killed her mother. Most likely the mother did it herself. And because of that, that is why she's hobbling over to Nalia and she stabs him. And the reason why she did it to herself is because she did not want to leave evidence behind for Maki 
for like for people to find for instance when people start to investigate what happened to the Zenon clan they'll be looking at like who did it who could have potentially done it and obviously eyes would potentially point to Maki and so the mother you know getting rid of herself basically is like I won't leave evidence behind you know you will be safe so she protected her daughter in the best way she potentially could it's very sad but it also once again it hints at the fact that she was a caring parent in her own way not perfect but a caring parent and I think that's very beautiful honestly it's a nice way to kind of wrap up you know Maki's childhood and Mai's childhood and the parent situation because we have this very awful father but then we also see a mother that regrets some of her decisions but also wasn't entirely bad obviously she's not innocent because she was definitely aware of the plot going on behind the scenes with Maya Maki but once again I feel like she felt guilt and that's why she did what she did so just yeah looking at this page it's uh it's pretty interesting it's a really interesting twist to my and Maki's pair, you know, parents and you know the mother, but uh, yeah, Nalia though that that that's something I need to talk about. Nalia is probably dead, which um, I'm shocked. Like, okay, so as I talked about in my uh, last chapter of you, Nalia he has such a unique, like really unique technique, you know, projection sorcery. I, I talked about this, so I'm not gonna rehash what I said, but. His ability is very unique, and because of just how unique it is, I was just like, it would make sense for his character to really stay around. Yeah, he's an awful douchebag. He said some awful things. 100% I agree with that, but it's just like, he hasn't really, from what we have seen, killed anyone, and it's possible that he could have some reform, some redemption, but with what, you know, Maki's mother did, he's probably dead, and if not dead... I have a theory that he might become, like, some form of vengeful spirit. That is my assumption, because it's like, he didn't die to, like, curse techniques or anything. He died to a kitchen knife, literally getting stabbed on the floor in his heart. He did not die uh, by a jujitsu sorcerer. So when you really think about it, it's like, he might become an entity. An entity that will hunt down Maki in the future, which would leave a, a nice little, I guess, more story development for Maki in the future. Because even though she wiped out her entire clan, if he did in fact die and doesn't come back as a vengeful spirit, Maki's overall story arc is pretty much done. So I am interested to see if maybe Nalia might come back as a vengeful spirit to hunt down Maki because he once again wasn't killed by jujitsu sorcery or anything like that. He was literally just killed by a kitchen knife. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. I do think that Nalia, this isn't the end for him, but I think the current form that he's in is not going to be the same. He's probably going to be something very different going forward if he does in fact survive this. But uh, let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing we move on to is Maki leaving the Zenin clan's, you know, house. And she literally carries Mai's body and drops it down and is like, here, have it. And she is asked a question, like, what are you going to do next? Like, you know, what's next for you? I mean, you've already done all this. What are you going to do? And she doesn't answer, and then we get a brief little narration saying that a bunch of Zen and Clan that was not there at that, that family household was just annihilated. Completely annihilated, and there's really, nobody knows what happened, who did it, etc. They just know that they were wiped out. So when you just look at that situation, it's like she really did even wipe out those that weren't even at the, you know, the Zen and Clan's family household, and they're just, they're gone now. And I mean, you even see hints that the other great family families like the Gojo clan that that's a big one Gojo's clan actually tries to talk about how you know the Zenin clan should be removed from the great families and if that is indeed the case this lets us know that the Gojo family there's some stuff going on there I mean we know Gojo you know he was a big entity a part of the whole clan but now seeing that his clans making moves like that I'm curious to see when they get introduced and we find out more about them I, I really want to know more about them because that that clan is a big mystery and I want to know their overall thoughts and feelings towards let's say Megami and everything else but uh yeah just a really brief chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, but it does really hit the, you know, the nail on the head in terms of what it was trying to emphasize with Maki's character, and now that she is done what she needs to do, what's next for her? She's an empty vessel now. She really 
doesn't really have a goal or a dream. Love was taken away from her. You know, Mai's death, and her family is gone. And the only thing she really has at this point is Megami, but, I mean, even then, it's just like, it makes you wonder, what is she going to do now? What is really next for her? But I really can't wait to see what Gegi Akutami actually does with, you know, Maki in the future and the story. But I guess we're going to have to wait for a while. But the wait will definitely be worth it. So I'm just uh, I'm going to wrap it up here, though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click that bell icon down below because it helps me out a lot. It allows you guys to get notified for whenever I do upload a video. And even if you don't want to do it for me, you know, hit it for YouTubers you really do care about because it also helps them out a lot and allow you to get notified for their content as well. Anyways, guys, be safe. Chibi out.